Welcome to Samsung Developer Webinar, uh, 12 Tips to Maximize Your Revenue with Samsung Gear Watch Faces. Uh, my name is Niklas Labek. Um, I'm from Samsung Developer Program based in Mountain View, California. And uh, Drazen, we have a pleasure, I have a pleasure to have uh, Drazen Stocic uh, from URIT Watch Faces uh, joining us from Croatia. A few housekeeping items. Um, during the webinar, um, you'll be able to send questions for us through the uh, chat window. Uh, this webinar will be also recorded, posted on YouTube, and, uh, for, and you can watch it again later after this webinar. Uh, let's jump in. Um, maybe before we start, a few words about how we can help you. Um, we are a, a Samsung developer support team based in Mountain View, California. You can easily approach us and ask questions via email, support at samsungdevelopers.com. The technologies that uh, the team supports are Samsung Android SDKs, Dyson Studio Variable SDK, Gear Watch Face Designer, and Theme Editor. And uh, you can find our uh, developer services at program.developer.samsung.com. That's a new home. We migrated to this location. And now when you log into um, Samsung Developer Program, you need to use a Samsung account. That's the big uh, new change. The services that are available for developers and designers are, uh, for example, the discounted device program, where you can buy device, test devices, and save up to 30%. However, this is a US-only program. Uh, you can you subscribe um, to the, our monthly newsletter, and you'll be first known to major announcements from Samsung, the upcoming webinars. We provide you technical support. Uh, we aim to respond to you in 12 hours or less. And, and a, a very popular service, the uh, a banner promotion request. These are the banners that appear in the Galaxy App Store, or Gear Store, and Theme Store. And if you get selected, then uh, sellers typically see it a four times increase uh, in their revenue. And then last but not the least, the Samsung badges, a way to create a short URL to your content item and uh, you, which you can then use on your uh, own media outside the store to drive traffic from your channels to your items, which typically result to seven times better conversion than organic traffic in the store. We have some existing uh, great material uh, for gear publishers. Uh, firstly, kind of a, uh, if you are new to, a con if you're considering taking this journey, uh, we have some product overview presentations available from the product manager, who will basically give you an overview of the product. Um, then for uh, designers and developers, um, kind of good uh, a webinar about the design, design principles for a very small screen device. That is the developer guide to the new Samsung Gear Sport. And then for uh, development, uh, we have, as there's two, technical, two different approaches to create watch face. There's the watch face designer as then uh, Tyson Studio. So we have a number of um, webinars available to uh, walk through the uh, development experience, publishing, how to publish through seller office, and then promotion, very important part, and then this, this webinar covers the monetization. And you can see on the bottom of the page, the link to our webinar homepage, where you can see not only the gear um, uh, webinars, but also webinars about themes and Samsung in a purchase plan. If this is your first webinar about um, Sam, Samsung gear, and kind of maybe a quick uh, overview, what is a watch face? So watch face is on Samsung Gear the most, fr uh, freak most frequently used and visited screen. It is the home of your device. When you do the wrist up event, the display activates and shows you the time. That is the watch face. So it's uh, basically a way for you to personalize the device to a personal taste. It is an app with uh, one screen and there are two different options. Uh, you either use the Gear Watch Face Designer. If you're a designer, you don't need to code it. It's more like a Photoshopping experience. If you're an engineer, then you may uh, use the, the, uh, all the features available from the uh, Tyson platform using the Tyson Variable Studio. Watch faces are the dominant content for uh, Samsung Gear users. We can see on this slide that uh, on the left-hand side, we can see that out of the content, um, uh, 960,000 uh, plus content items that are available in the store, 94% are 
watch faces, and 91% are designed with a gear watch face design. From the uh, consumption uh, perspective, we can see that 82% of the downloads in the store are watch faces, and again, 91% are done with uh, uh, are developed with the gear watch face design. So the market opportunity is on a wearable, small wearable device, is uh, in the watch faces. So let's jump into the 12 tips that uh, we, you might want to consider in the journey uh, uh, how to make uh, most of the, how to optimize um, ability to make money. First off, first tip, um, in the Galaxy App Store on your phone, um, a, a very useful tab is to see what are the top paid uh, items on for your gear. Um, this is a very useful list. You'll see what are the top trending. You'll see the, um, uh, the uh, pricing of the top items that are being consumed in your market. So this list is different depending on the mark, on the country, and the country is set by your by your consumers Samsung account uh, country information. Then the second tip is to make sure that the, your product description is optimized for direct download. So if you are lucky and uh, you get featured uh, by, by the algorithm on this uh, top paid or top new uh, list, then um, uh, it's important that uh, your icon, your title, price, reviews, and the, and the, and the publisher name are optimized for for direct download. So in this direct download scenario, consumer just uh, uh, hits the download button and then he's asked to check out. So the user doesn't even visit, doesn't even ever see your screenshots or the product detail page. So it's important that you're optimized for direct download. If your um, uh, icon is uh, very dark, you may consider um, improving the contrast so that uh, consumers can see um, uh, as much as possible that uh, what is the, your watch face like. And my recommendation would be to use every single pixel available to show your design. Tip number three, um, Samsung has two different uh, uh, Samsung uh, uh, smartwatches, uh, the circular gear which has started with <clears throat> Gear S2, Gear S3, and Gear Sport, and then Gear Fit. So you can assume an 80-20 rule that 80% of the content downloads are happening on the circular gear, 20% on the Gear Fit. So start with the uh, watch face, uh, uh, optimize it, and uh, start with the uh, circular gear, and then later do uh, Gear Fit. Another um, uh, tip is to design uh, for the target demography. So uh, these are the, uh, here you can see on this slide, the top watch faces in 2017. We'll see which one were the most popular among males and which one were uh, the most popular among females. I mean, uh, last year, when you looked at the, uh, uh, the devices in the market, they were uh, dark masculine designs and you can see that uh, the designs are also very techy, dark, busy. Um, and uh, the rule that I would give you is that 80-20 rule that the addressable market is, uh, is much bigger with males and, um, uh, and uh, kind of you may want to consider a design that appeals to that demographic first. Tip number five. Um, if you look at the downloads, paid downloads, where the revenue is coming from for sellers, you can see on this slide that a couple of things. First of all, you'll see that the, the USA, Germany, United Kingdom, uh, Korea, and Russia, those markets make about 60% of, uh, of the revenues. So it means for you as a seller is that you want to make sure that you're well positioned for all of these markets. And um, some of these markets uh, may require localization. You can do that through seller office. You can uh, set a different title for the, for the watch face, uh, for example, German, uh, and also the description and the screenshots so that you are well, very, very well um, uh, present your uh, item in, in those local stores. 
Additionally, you'll see that when you combine the English-speaking markets together, it's about uh, 40, 45%. So there, uh, it means that the non-English market, non-English natively speaking market is quite significant and you may want to consider localization. Additionally, if you do get, get, do get accepted to be featured with a banner, um, I would recommend then to provide us the uh, banner localized to these five languages. Tip number six, um, how to price items correctly. Um, as we'll, a couple of things. One is that at the moment we have we are observing that 99% of the transactions are done through the paid uh, uh, transaction. That means that consumers pay upfront. There's no try and buy. It's not in a purchase enabled. So that's something to uh, observe whether that is going to change. But at the moment, every 99% of the transactions are paid content and 80% of the paid transactions are priced between a dollar and two dollars. On this screen, you'll see then um, uh, a, it downloads as a function of the price, and you'll see that uh, that majority of the downloads are within that price range. Tip number seven, create the brand identity. And um, I'll just use an example from a totally different industry. Uh, if you think about the car, let's take an example, or Volvo or BMW. When you see a car, a BMW on the street, regardless of whether it's a small BMW or a big, you recognize that it's part of the BMW family. If you go to a watch store, a traditional watch store, you see a Rolex, you see, you always recognize what is a Rolex. So I would recommend you to de consider designing, uh, come be consistent and be loyal to the to the design style that you have started, so that the consumers will recognize you and your brand, and it's consistent. It's not a, a portfolio of watch faces that um, uh, is basically kind of all over the board, kind of all different de demographics, but something that you, that you are consistent. And then be consistent with the name of the uh, how you design your icon. How do you name your uh, titles, the titles, and then the screenshots? And I think it's going to be also too uh, important to uh, create an easy to remember company name. In this slide, I'm sharing an example of uh, developer Bergen. Uh, it's a, I think we can make a few observations, a very consistent portfolio of various designs. We can see a uh, unique way of using a red dot with their icon, which is, uh, creates a consistency. And also, I would say that the, uh, the company name, Bergen, is a very easy to remember, easy to share with your friends. If somebody noticed on your wrist amazing watch face, well, who was it? And uh, some of the uh, um, publisher names are not that easy to remember. And uh, if you think uh, that you have a global uh, audience, so come up with a, a, a company name that is very easy to share with uh, other consumers. Tip number eight. A very similar is that once you identify that you have a design that uh, consumers like the most, then you may want to consider that you make variations of the same design. So again, very similar to the number seven is the consistency, something that kind of um, tweaks uh, different versions um, so that consumers come back and, and buy more from your portfolio. Tip number nine, very important, amazing uh, screenshots. And uh, here we have a publisher uh, using portrait screenshots. I would recommend to make sure that they are portrait. You are most likely holding the device in your hand, your Galaxy phone, and you, in case user taps on the portrait screenshots, they will be then optimal uh, for a portrait experience if they are designed this way rather than landscape. And, um, and um, it's a very important to do this part well. I mean, you spend uh, hours and days designing a, a watch face. It's very important that you design and present the product kind of so that consumers feel your attention to the details. And uh, this is kind of a very handcrafted formula designer uh, to the consumers. Um, 
And remember that the majority of the 99% of the content is paid content. So the consumer has no way to test it on the real device before they buy it. So therefore, spend time on optimizing those screenshots. Tip number 10, uh, promote your watch faces with Samsung badges. Um, so this is a, a service that um, um, uh, you can create short URLs um, on our portal. It's very much similar to Bitly or Tiny URL, URL service. Um, what's important is that then you can then you can send consumers to your content items uh, when they hit the link on a, on a Samsung device. So you take the control of your destiny. You can do paid user acquisition when you think that consumers will like most uh, your content. Um, you will build uh, loyalty to among consumers. And um, our observation is that the conversion is seven times higher. That means that when you send your consumer from your channels to the store, the conversion is about 83%. If you are then, if they randomly discover you through in the in the in the store, it's about 11 uh, percent. So it's basically you send a high quality when consumers are sent from your channels to the store. It's very like they're very interested. They like the design, and they just want to uh, now down buy it. Um, it is possible to uh, uh, create a diff two different types of uh, short URLs. One is to one product and one to the uh, uh, seller portfolio. And on this slide on the bottom of the page, you'll find two URLs that you can punch in on your Samsung phone to see the different experience if this is something that you have not yet used. Uh, also on our um, uh, program pages on my dashboard, you can download the daily uh, click-through rate and you can get an idea of uh, how many clicked it, uh, the link on a Samsung device and on Samsung device and on the desktop. Uh, but we'll see that more 90 plus percent of the users are clicking on the link on the Samsung devices. And this is the process on my dashboard. How do you then create the short URL, log into the program.developer.samsung.com. You define what is the content type, Android gear theme, and whether you want to send the user to a one item, which is the product detail page on your seller portfolio. Of course, the seller portfolio is kind of convenient, it's always send user to your portfolio. They can browse your entire list of, of items. And here are a few examples of, uh, of, of, of publishers who have created uh, websites. Very Here's an example of a Swiss watch face designer, their website. Uh, you'll feel the, the attention and the details, very premium feeling, dark colors. Um, and, and how they promote their content uh, in their website. And here's an example of Bergen, uh, a, um, a uh, unique uh, way of, uh, of a funny way to uh, show that the watch faces are collectibles, um, that uh, different versions uh, of the, their same uh, brand identity. And then from the website, users then easily are sent to the store to buy buy the items. Tip number 11, um, submit um, a banner request. So in the Gear App Store, you will, when you go to the store, you will see banners. And the banners typically are um, associated with one seller. And when you are very well performing in the store, uh, you should consider sending a, a banner request and, um, you know, from the dashboard and um, share your uh, uh, kind of, you will upload the banner request evaluation spreadsheet where you provide the content IDs and our staff will analyze and, and work with you to optimize the banners. And then uh, uh, six to 12 content items will be included, would be included in the content set and a typical promotion is then uh, two weeks. Um, we also have recently launched a new service for um, new publishers. It's called New Indies. And if you are a um, um, new gear publisher that you have been less than a year in the store, you have more than 10 watch faces available, um, and you are converting well, but maybe you are not getting enough hits to your items, you should uh, send a request to be included in this indie banner. 
and uh, that's a way that uh, we can help you get discovered. Uh, for example, and this is a U.S. only um, at the moment, but uh, anybody uh, can apply to be included, but the banner will appear only in the, in the U.S. market. Tip 12, uh, amazing customer support. So when consumers leave you good or bad feedback or any feedback in the store, Make sure that you reply. And um, if it's uh, um, uh, sometimes you may consider using uh, coupons to surprise your customers. You give them a coupon to download another item for free. And I'm sure that the moving forward they will be they they they, they love you and they will uh, uh, kind of uh, brag their watch faces to your friends. Uh, if it's um, uh, negative feedback, we, sellers always receive negative feedback. Evaluate, uh, respond, uh, respecting the customer, and then take actions based on the feedback. Other tips, if you are publishing a lot of watch faces, the recommendation would not be to publish them all at the same time. If you do that, uh, it, uh, it is likely to um, um, impact negatively your uh, discovery in the store. So face them out, do one at a time. Um, lead generation, it seems that uh, if you are giving a one code and item for free, then you, it, it will drive traffic to your other paid items. You may want to do an AP testing to see if that works for you. Um, you may want to be ready when uh, uh, there is a peak download season. Uh, when a new device is um, uh, available, then these early adopters are heavy users uh, and, uh, and kind of they want to personalize their device. Uh, so you may want to consider that they'll be ready with your portfolio when a new device hits the market. Also, holidays, uh, December 25th is a, a peak day for downloads. Um, consumers are getting watch faces um, uh, as a holiday gift. And, uh, and that's a big season. Um, uh, and then the last but not the least is then apply for um, Samsung theme editor access. If you're, con if you're a designer, that might give you an option to then you have the same design on your phone as well as on your watch. All right, um, now I have pleasure to um, uh, invite Drazen to share, he will share his perspective on creating and selling watch faces. Drazen, over to you. Uh, thank you, Nicholas. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Drazen. Um, some of you know me probably by my brand name, uh, Your Rarity. And uh, just a quick introduction of uh, who I am. I've been in the multimedia business for nearly 20 years now, uh, worked a lot in the electronic media, in the print media, um, video and photography production, uh, design, post-production, color correction, uh, some application design. And um, I will try and share some of my own personal uh, experiences creating watch faces. Uh, I use uh, Gear Watch Designer to uh, make all of my watch faces and um, let's get started so i think the first thing we should cover is uh, where to find inspiration for your watch faces um, obviously this is very individual and uh, everyone has a different process some people will do it one way some will do it another i will try and uh, share some of my own tips and tricks um, and and kind of give you an idea of how I personally uh, do things. So um, you can see on the right hand side on the slide uh, some of my watch faces and uh, where the inspiration for them uh, came from. Uh, on top is one of my most popular watch faces, uh, the Pulse series, and it was basically I was inspired by a simple button in an elevator. I liked how it glowed and um, I just went with that simple blue circle and it turned out to be uh, really popular. Um, also, there's an example of a travel inspired uh, watch face uh, in the middle. 
uh, on the left side you can see uh, the standard flight monitor on uh, on uh, ocean over over ocean uh, flights and the uh, last example is the uh, heartbeat monitor which i uh, used as a basic design element for my health oriented watch face um, so basically the, the idea is to you know you can find inspiration in everyday objects things you work with um, things you deal with every day uh, i would also uh, recommend checking out computer games so if you are into computer games that will definitely come in handy uh, technology in general so be it your smartphone or an app on your smartphone or a uh, or your computer or your laptop or just things you you use every day maybe you're not even uh, realizing that there are very very cool design elements that you can apply in your own watch faces and uh, finally art uh, i use uh, a lot of uh, inspiration from art mostly for uh, color combinations and also i would uh, advise you to check um, some of the trends for example in magazines especially in print magazines or on uh, web uh, check out which colors are kind of uh, popular these days what's the you know color of the season so all of these things are very good to draw inspiration from um, before i get to how to actually make watch faces uh, look interesting uh, Nicholas mentioned before, uh, you can check the, the top lists on the uh, Galaxy Gear apps uh, on the store to see what other people are doing. Uh, that's definitely something I would uh, suggest if you are just starting. Uh, nowadays, I mostly uh, actually avoid doing that because I feel I don't want to get too much influence from other designers. So I, I kind of stay away from that. But if you are just starting and trying to figure things out, definitely go and take a look at what other people are doing. So how to make watch faces look interesting. Um, use contemporary colors. This is what I mentioned before. Check what's popular, see what, what color combinations work and uh, start with that. Also using complications is a very good thing it's really popular with the customers they like having a lot of things on the screen so for example on the watch face you see on the right side um, there's a moon complication that will change uh, moon phases there's a, a step counter a bpm counter a date a day of week the battery level i would you know no matter what kind of watch face you make I would never make a watch face without having a better level indicator, be it as a number or as a graphic indicator. But I think that's the one of the basic things, obviously, along with the, uh, with the time. Um, create movement. Most of my watch faces are animated. Um, this is, I, I'm kind of a, a lucky, I have a, <laughs> a good skill set and uh, I make I have experience with making animations so I can use uh, you know advanced animations that look really interesting on the watch faces but even if you are not an animator or if you don't have experience uh, creating animations you can still uh, uh, make movement through using simply gear watch designer using the timeline uh, you can make uh, images change depending on the time of day or even on the time uh, of, uh, you know, each second and so on. So uh, definitely check those things out. It will help uh, sell your watch faces. Uh, there's a very cool complication that uses gyroscopic position of the watch itself. It's available for Gear S3 and uh, Gear Sport series. Uh, you can make all sorts of things slide in and out of screen. Uh, you know, it will definitely, it will differentiate your watch faces, make you stand out a little bit more. And as I said, customers like motion and they like having their watch faces react to movement. 
And uh, finally, funds. Uh, you get a pre-installed set of funds with your uh, GearWatch designer, but you can also add your own funds. I would suggest you definitely start adding um, personal funds. There's nothing wrong with the default ones, but uh, adding new fonts is also a good thing that will attract uh, user attention. Uh, when designing watch faces, always try to balance looks and features. So it's not enough for you only to make your watch face look good. It also needs to be useful. You need to make sure that all the text is easy to read in all conditions, be it uh, pitch dark or middle of the day with the sun shining straight on your wrist. So when you are designing watch faces, you will have to make some compromises. Uh, you will have to uh, ac accommodate for some of the things you want to include. And uh, I would say that making text easy to read is probably the most important one if you are making digital watch faces. But same thing goes if you're using analog watch faces, you want to make sure that the watch hands, watch hands are always, you know, easy to see because telling time is the number one thing that users expect. And uh, also try to add functionality. Uh, there are very cool things you can do, such as you can add uh, shortcuts to some of the pre-installed apps on every uh, gear device. So for example, if you, um, for this uh, watch face that you can see on the screen, if you tap on the um, step uh, counter, it will take you to the Samsung Health app. Uh, if you tap on the date, it will open up schedule app. If you tap on the uh, main digital clock, it will open alarm app. So try and add something more the uh, the more uh, the more features your watch face has uh, the more likely the customers will pay to use it um so this is pretty straightforward and um definitely make sure to test all of your watch faces uh gear watch designer has a simulator tool that will show you how your watch face will look on the device but I would still uh, recommend test every single watch face you make on an actual device. Uh, personally, I use watch faces for at least a day or two. I, I tr try using them in some of my own everyday scenarios. I test all the buttons. I test all the shortcuts. I test out the always on display. And, you know, I, I always try to see I, I check for the battery use. This is also very important, something that the customers are really sensitive about. So make sure that everything is working as expected. Don't just test it on the computer, test it on the um, actual device. And obviously be ready to update your uh, watch faces depending on user feedback. Um, Niklas already mentioned a little bit about this, but uh, I, I think it's really important to, to uh, say this again, uh, how to grab user attention. Everything starts with, uh, with the icons uh, because the icons or the thumbnails, if you will, are the first thing that any user will see. So make sure your thumbnails are all, you know, really good looking and they're various ways uh, other designers are using icons some are using um, actual devices some are using just uh, uh, 2d images uh, some are some are using uh, various colors on the icons uh, whatever you do pick a design and then stick with it because over time users will simply learn to recognize your designs just by, by looking at the icons uh, same thing goes for uh, designing uh, screenshots. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see one of my very first watch faces. I think this was like the third watch face I made in 2017. And on the right hand side, you can see how my one of my latest design, the one of my latest watch face uh, screenshot design looks like. So 
on one hand, you can see there is a consistency with the image position and with some of the uh, uh, framing. But I also evolved a lot because, uh, for example, you can see that the image on the right hand side features a lot more of the watch face. Most of the users know how the devices look and they don't want to see that. They want to see how the watch face looks. So I've kind of uh, enlarged the watch face. I've also added some uh, text and you can see uh, by using some of the uh, catchphrases, uh, you can really uh, get, get people interested and it, it's more likely that they will buy the watch face if you, you know, present it in a very concise, but also very cool way. So this is obviously also individual. You will need to figure out how your uh, brand or what your style will be. But I would definitely suggest add the brand name on all of your uh, screenshots and also add some text and as much info as you can without overwhelming the users. Um, so I mentioned catchphrases and uh, text description. I spend a lot of time writing textual descriptions of my watch faces. This is something I, I most developers don't do. I feel that if you spend a lot of time and effort in designing a watch face, you should spend an equally amount of time uh, designing the thumbnails, designing the screenshots, uh, writing the, the descriptions. And while the textual descriptions is not something that a lot of customers will read, simply they will skip over it especially if they want to find out something about how a certain function works, but it can really make a difference. So, you know, you, this is more of a marketing strategy, but definitely consider adding textual descriptions to your watch faces. Um, speaking of marketing, social networks, um, there's really no, 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 uh, special tips I can give you because this is a very wide topic, but I would say that having a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a Twitter account, and uh, even a YouTube account can, all of those can be really powerful to present and market your watch faces. Um, I would also suggest that depending on how serious you get about all this, you may consider making your own personal web page. Uh, all of this takes a lot of time. You will not have big audiences overnight. You will need to invest, you know, maybe even some money to, to promote your pages, but it's, it's really useful. And also, uh, you can see on the right side, some of my banner images that I use for advertising. Um, they are uh, short in the in textual description because people don't really have a lot of time to read. So it's just the, the, the basic things you want to, the most basic thing you want to say about your watch face, that's what you would put. And also try and make it look as good as possible and as interesting and as possible. I also use um, banners in different languages. I, I pay for professional translations to make sure that everything is translated correctly. So this is something you also may consider, maybe not at first, but definitely over time. Uh, one of the things I always point out uh, about my own brand is the customer support. So I make absolutely sure to answer all of the comments, any feedback, any email, any comments on my social network accounts, any questions. And because you need to understand that a uh, customer always feels that they are the most important person and you need to treat them like that. So uh, Nicholas mentioned a little bit about this earlier. Um, be very polite. I would say that most of the comments I get are positive. Sometimes they are, uh, you know, neutral and sometimes they can be really bad, really rude. So you need to keep your cool and treat all of the customers, you know, with 
total respect. This will also help you to establish a fan base over time. I, uh, I think I've managed to do that. And it's really interesting to see that people that you have a very personal relationship with will actually, you know, become your regular customers. They will purchase more of your watch faces. They will appreciate if you sometimes give them free coupons or just by simply taking some of their comments uh, into account when designing new faces or when making changes to the existing ones. Or sometimes they will simply like to see what are you working on currently. They So all of these are really simple things, but I feel very important in uh, customer relationships. And now uh, we come to the money part. So you can make watch faces and you know uh, offer them for free but if you want to try and monetize some of your works i think it's uh, fairly safe to say that if you are seeing yourself as uh, someone on this photo uh, heaps of money and you know you don't have to do anything else in your life that's probably not how it's going to be so don't get uh, uh don't don't come into uh designing watch faces with too high expectations but uh there is money to be made this will depend on so many things um not everyone will be able to get great results but then again not everybody wants uh or has the same conditions to do it so there is definitely a, a big market uh, watch faces are really popular. You saw the uh, the charts earlier. You can get into this and you can get some money from it if you are really, really uh, patient and if you spend really a lot of time and energy working and designing your watch faces, I am definitely sure you will see results for me personally. It took about six months before I started noticing some, you know, significant uh, uh, sales of my watch faces online. And also just try and learn with every new watch face. This will definitely help you to improve in the future. And uh, I have a, a few questions that... Um, audience has been asking so i will take a second to just quickly answer them uh first one is uh what is the best software to use to put your watch face screenshots on the gear watch in your portfolio uh, you can make screenshots of the uh, watch face through gear watch designer this is really cool and very handy there's an option you can set up everything just the way you want it at exact time and just click an icon and you get a nice uh, transparent PNG file that you can then use in Photoshop or in whichever graphic designer tool you you are using. Uh, about next question, where do I find the URL that leads to my Samsung watch face store? Uh, Niklas mentioned this before. Uh, you need to ask for a badge. So make a request through the uh, Samsung developer um, uh, website, request a badge for your whole online portfolio. You will get a link and you can use this in marketing on social networks and on, on things like YouTube and so on. Uh, third question, uh, the best channels to promote a watch face. Uh, we already use all the social networks, but are there specialized websites, Reddit subs, or Google groups that you can recommend? So there are definitely uh, forums where uh, watch faces are being shared. Reddit is one of one of those places. Uh, there are also uh, groups on Facebook. Several of them are really popular, and a lot of designers use them to market uh, their new designs. But uh, honestly, I don't think there's just like this one place when you can, where you can go and make sure where you will be guaranteed to get uh, attention. So it really needs to spread out. It, you need to throw your uh, net really wide and cover all of the as many things as you can. 
Um, okay, and the last question is when I have a comment from someone, it does, it does not give me an email. So how do I get it, get it to give them a coupon? Okay, so this is one of the things that was changed a few months ago on the uh, seller office. Uh, unfortunately, we do not see uh, user emails anymore. I believe this was a privacy issue. So the only way uh, to get users um, is to make is to leave a comment and ask them to contact you. This is not very economical. <laughs> it's not very practical, but uh, I use it a lot and I've opened actually an email account just for this purpose. So I will leave my comment and in the end I will leave a, a, a polite request. Please uh, send me an email, get in touch with me on this and this and address. And most people actually do read replies and they will get back to you. So then you can tell them I would like to give you a coupon or I would like to discuss this with you and, you know, take it from there. Okay, so this is it from me. Um, I hope uh, you found some of my uh, tips useful. I started working with GearWatch Designer not two years ago, so I've had really great success. And I would also like to thank the Samsung team. They've been really very helpful. And I'm sure that if you have any questions or any issues, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, these guys are really great. They want to help you. And I would like to finally wish all of you good luck on designing your watch faces. Thank you. Thank you, Drazen. Um, uh, I'll add, thank you for answering the questions and uh, I'll, I'll add a few words. So something that uh, for the question number one, the regarding the screenshots and designing amazing screenshots. So. There is also a, a, um, a great media resource site where you find then the high resolution device images. That is samsungmobilepress.com. So samsungmobilepress.com, that's the media archive where you can get and download a high resolution images of, um, of Samsung gear. So that might be a, a useful site. So you get the device images, um, for example, for your website. And, and regarding the uh, seller uh, uh, URL, so that maybe the best would be to log into the program.developer.samsung.com and then go to the, uh, uh, with your Samsung account, go to the Samsung badges and that form that you need to fill that has a help section and that will explain you how do you then create the, what do you need to insert on the form in order to create the, that the system creates you a, a URL to your seller page. All right, so these were uh, the questions, um, and you can see on this page then links for the, the material that we shared uh, during this presentation. I want to thank you, Drazen, for sharing your best practices. Um, we have a survey that we would run to run, and uh, objective is to understand from you sellers that what do you need to know, what kind of webinars you would like to ask to work on the second half of this year, and, um, and kind of also the usefulness of this content that we shared today. But I want to thank you, the audience, thank you for joining, thank you Drazen and my team for, for producing this webinar. Have a great day.